The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Welcome to The Life You Want is Yours, the show that is dedicated to living, loving, and having the most happy, healthy, successful, and abundant life. Yes, it is possible to live such life, and it isn't very difficult to build it. Patrick Kern, my husband, will accompany me in this show. Welcome, everyone. I hope you're having a great day. We will be meeting with you on the air every week at the same time. We are transmitting this show from the UK. Patrick and I are located in Toronto, in Canada, and our listeners are located in various parts of America and Europe. Some people say that the world has shrunk. I personally think that the world is still the same. It hasn't shrunk. What happened is that our consciousness has expanded. Why am I saying that our consciousness has expanded instead of, for instance, the technology has greatly developed? It's because everything begins with consciousness and its expansion. That's right. In our shows, we will talk about everything that is most important for our growth, for expanding our consciousness and living the life we want. It is possible and it doesn't have to be really hard to change any life situation and create a different reality if we know how to do that, if we have the knowledge and the right tools to do so. We will give you such tools during our shows, but before we do so, let's start from the very beginning. Let's talk about what our consciousness is and how we create and co-create our reality. All of physics, as we know it, is based on quantum theory, which is in turn the basis of one-third of the world's economy and its products. The fathers of quantum mechanics, Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg, jointly received the Nobel Prize for their work in uh, 1965, and quantum mechanics became the most precise physical theory. It explains everything from how the stars or sun shine to why objects appear to be hard and gives us everything from computer chips, lasers, transistors to atomic bombs. There are two basic principles of quantum theory. First, Reality is being created by an observer. Two, connectedness. Any things that have ever interacted are forever connected and tangled. And what does it mean? It means that quantum theory shows us that the material, physical world, which the observers, that is we, perceive through our senses, that material world does not exist that it is only an illusion which our brains, or more precisely our minds, interpret via our senses, giving us the illusion of reality. Yes, I know it's not easy to picture it, it seems very abstract, but this is how it works. And as we said before, one third of our economy exists because of that understanding. We are the observers who create reality. Now, the second basic principle of quantum theory, the connectedness, means that we are being forever connected to everything we have ever come with contact with. And because of the connectedness, we create the reality not only for ourselves, but for everyone and everything that we have ever in any way been in touch with. Basically, I'd say that we co-create the reality for everything that exists, since one way or another we are connected with everything. Let's have a quick look into how the illusion works. There are two physicists, Peter Higgs and Francois Englert, who received the Nobel Prize in 2013 for a discovery of the Higgs boson, a key building block of the universe which some scientists call the God particle, and for the symmetry breaking theory. These two physicists, already in 1964, 
talked about the energy field, which gives mass to everything that passes through it, from planets and stars to the cells of human bodies. In other words, everything that exists is simply energy. That includes all that is material, measurable by our senses, and all that we can only perceive, our thoughts, emotions, or electrons. Did you know that nobody ever has seen or weighed an electron? That's right. All that exists, that is energy, manifests itself through waves and vibrations. And that means that everything, on the smallest scale, vibrates. Everything vibrates, including our thoughts. They behave like radio waves, just like with radio waves, the frequency of vibrations of our thoughts determines their quality and outreach. And just like with radio waves, our thoughts are being sent out to reach, well, whatever they can reach. And what they can reach depends on the frequency of their vibrations. And that decides how our thinking affects the reality, or rather the illusion, that we create and co-create, whether we are aware of it or not. There also have been some interesting developments in science recently, and many media have been writing or talking about them. The parallel universes theory. They talk about us living in a multiverse rather than in a single universe. Yes, and we need to remember that it isn't the theory anymore. It's an outcome of decades or even centuries long research deriving from the quantum mechanics and string theory. One of the many scientists preoccupied with that matter is Dr. Robert Lanza, who was voted as the third most important scientist alive by the New York Times. He explains that the structure of the universe with all its laws and forces implies that intelligence existed prior to matter. He says that space and time do not really exist, but rather that we sort of carry them with us like turtles with shells. And he implies that the death of consciousness simply does not exist. And only because people identify with their body, they believe that when their body perishes, their consciousness will too. He says that if somebody dies in one of the universes, his or her consciousness moves to another universe, where the body is still alive, and so on, infinitely. There is also the European Organization for Nuclear Research, CERN, which between 1998 and 2008, together with over 10,000 scientists and engineers from over 100 countries, as well as hundreds of universities and laboratories, has built the largest single machine in the history of the world, the Large Hadron Collider. That machine lies in a tunnel 17 miles, 27 kilometers long, in circumference beneath the France and Switzerland border near Geneva in Switzerland. The collider has been indeed very successful this far, improving some of the theories. For instance, with its help, the scientists proved the existence of the Higgs boson, called by some the God particle, as we said before, since the tiny, much smaller than an atom, Higgs boson, is a key building block of the universe. The collider is also being used by scientists to prove the theory of dark matter, and they attempt to detect with it, or maybe even create with it, miniature black holes. That may be, indeed, a whole game-changer and we might need to rewrite all the physics books. That's right. That would be something, wouldn't it? As we can see, when our understanding of our world universe is changing, our reality is also changing. And that is due to the expansion of our consciousness. Not long ago, the medical field talked about consciousness as being related to our senses. There is even an existing term we use when someone faints. We say then that the person is unconscious. 
However, now, as we can see, we need to make a difference between the consciousness of our senses and the consciousness that we are beyond our senses, not being limited to our body and with the potential to exist forever. And that is the consciousness we will talk about during our shows. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. Consciousness is what it is. A vibration, a current, a signal. Is there a way to sustain the existence of the consciousness that we are? Yes. We can continue to exist as consciousness as long as we keep developing, progressing, and remaining aware of ourselves. Science has been preoccupied with the topic of infinity for the last century or so. Can we really be infinite? And if so, what does it mean to us? And how would the awareness of it affect our lives? Would we still have the same priorities? How would we live knowing that our life is an illusion and that it doesn't really exist? Would we still enjoy it? I'd say why not? Illusion or not, our life is worth enjoying, no matter what. After all, we do experience ourselves through the experiences of our life. Our life has a purpose. It is not an accident or a mistake. Our life is precious. And we need to fully understand its value if we want to fully enjoy it. Now that we had a good look at what's new in science, I'd like us to talk briefly about what some of the many belief systems have already been saying about infinity for thousands of years. For instance, Buddhist philosophy argues for an infinity continuing forward and reverse. It is a state of existence with no center, nor any permanent entity underpinning it. In Hindu cosmology, the belief is that everything is non-dualistic, and everything that is, is Brahman. Brahman is the eternal now, and in eternity, there is no before or after, for everything is everywhere, always. In Islam, there are references in the Quran that attribute infinity to God. Just as the biggest number cannot be comprehensible, then in the same way God also cannot be described in human terms or encompassed in just a simple word. Judaism believes in one God, who is eternal. God is beyond even the concept of beyond. Christian religion believes in an eternal God and, interestingly enough, gives the definition for infinity in the Bible, Matthew verses 5, 17 and 5, 18. Do not think that I come to abolish the law or the prophets, I did not come to abolish, but to fulfill. For truly I say to you, until heaven and earth pass away, not the smallest letter or strobe shall pass away from the law, until all is accomplished. As we can see, while science talks about everything being a part of one huge energy field, many belief systems talk about God being all there is, and containing everything within no matter whether it is science or a belief system that resonates the most with our own inner truth, some things remain the same. We are all part of one whole, and we are all connected. And you know what? It might be that what resonates with you is the scientific approach, or it might be that you are more drawn to a spiritual or religious belief. It is important to remember that there is no right or wrong answer. There is no better or worse approach. All that you believe or think about what's true to you is valid, real, and most important for you. In this show, we don't disregard anybody's preferences or beliefs. We only show you various angles and help you to expand your consciousness. This show is meant for everybody, no matter what is your background, age, gender, belief system, or lack of it. 
It is important to us that you will understand that. Whether you lean toward scientific theories or philosophical beliefs, the most important thing to remember is this. Life is a journey. Its distance is measured by the beauty of your heart, not by the length of it, not even by how successful you become in it. Your purpose as the consciousness that you are is to constantly evolve and experience yourself. As you will continue to grow and develop as the consciousness that you are, you will continue to exist. And that's actually something that all of the science and all the philosophical or religious beliefs agree upon. Soon technology will provide humans with all we need. 3D printers are already available. Labs producing real leather will soon lead to labs producing real food, vehicles, houses, everything. Money will disappear, not needed, not wanted anymore. What will be the next currency on this planet when all the money is gone? When everyone can have everything they want at any time they want? The technological progress precedes any other progress on our planet. We will not go from I want lots of money to let's unite and be happy together, yippee, in one step. The next stage of human development is already around the corner. The next currency is becoming obvious. Do you know what it is? Power. It's always been about power after all. Money was only the means to get it. What is the meaning of having power? It means that you can decide the lives and the fate of people and the fate of our planet. Thus far, one could obtain such power through threatening people's survival, through giving them financial rewards, bribing or killing. With money gone, that too will be gone. The paper power will have to be replaced by real power. And humanity will have to learn what the real power actually means. Remember, fortunes come and fortunes go. Empires crash overnight. The only thing that has a chance to remain eternal and continue to grow is the consciousness that we are. And that's according to both the scientific world and the many belief systems that exist on our planet. The only thing that is real in all the illusion that we have created and live in is that we are, we are alive, we are conscious of ourselves, and we have the opportunity to make our life whatever we want. It is up to us to enjoy it. We have the power over our own thoughts. So that means that we also have the power of our own reality or illusion of it, to be more precise. What then stops us from living the life we truly would like to live? Often it is our subconscious programming. The thoughts we keep perpetuating because of that keep us imprisoned, stuck in situations that don't benefit us at all. It is often the case that we get used to such situations and they become what I call habitual safety. It means that we have learned how to operate, how to survive in such situations and would rather deal with something that is familiar than try anything new. Because new is scary. Many of us have the subconscious fear of the unknown. It is actually quite common. And I have written about the top 10 fears in life before on my blog, on my official site, www.johannakern.com. We will talk in more details about the top 10 fears in our lives in our subsequent shows. And I will be happy to answer your questions. If you find yourself in any life situation that is not beneficial to you or perhaps hurtful, but you are afraid of changing your circumstances, because the unknown is rather scary, then you probably have the subconscious fear of change and unknown, and you are stuck in your habitual safety. You'd rather stay with the known than face the unknown. Many of us live that way. 
Many of us live a life that does not fulfill our deepest need to have it completely the way our heart desires. Instead, we tend to settle for less, following the footsteps of those who, before us, also settled for less, believing that that's the way it is. Really, can we fully agree deep down in our heart that not having the life we truly want is the way it has to be? I don't think so. I don't want to live that way. Me neither. Our life is our own journey. Only we decide which route we want to choose, what we want to experience on our journey, where we want to arrive, and in whose company. As long as our fear of change and the unknown persists, we are missing up on the opportunities that are coming our way. Yes. It is easy to get used to any situation we are in, and it is more difficult to welcome change and step into an uncertain ground. Yet, it can be done. As a matter of fact, it has been done by many others that you might admire and even envy their successful and happy lives. I usually say, if it has been done, it means you can do it too. I will be very glad to respond to your questions in the next show regarding your fear of change. Send me an email at radio at johannakern.com. Don't worry, you will remain anonymous. We will not reveal your identity while responding to your questions. Remember, you are worth living the most wonderful life and you have nothing to lose except your fear of change and uncertainty. Before we move to our next topic of today's show, I'd like you to repeat after me in your mind a very useful affirmation from my book 365 plus 1 Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The affirmation goes as follows. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me if I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being, one in billions, with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Very well done. We will repeat this affirmation at the end of the show when I'll be guiding you through a short relaxation to help you in the process of reprogramming your subconscious. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern. And now it's time for the game. Nine pennies can change your life. Okay, let us begin. We don't need to be stuck in a stream of circumstances and perpetuate what's no longer satisfying. Contrary to some beliefs, our destiny is not a fixed thing. It doesn't take hard work or struggle to change what we want. A short story of two brothers and nine pennies says it all. I'm listening. Two brothers were born to a wealthy family in a prosperous and peaceful small country. The older brother was to inherit everything, the title, the land, and the fortune. The younger brother was to remain dependent on the older brother's goodwill. All citizens in their country enjoyed their good fortune and nobody had much to worry about. For centuries they cultivated their traditions, repeating what had been proven to be beneficial for them. Nothing had ever been changed and there was no need for fixing what worked. When the two brothers reached their maturity, 
the older brother was taking care of the estate, while the younger one was left to himself. For a few years he was exploring the land and learning about its people. Although everyone around him lived without worries, all was stuck in a stagnant life that began to get stale. And that's because they had isolated themselves from everything new and fresh. And without progress, things begin to regress. The younger brother realized quickly that without progress, true happiness was gone from the people's lives. They seemed to have their basic needs met. Yet they were all growing sadder, and despite all the comfort they had, many of them were getting ill, depressed, and no one seemed to enjoy their lives. The younger brother tried to discuss the situation with them, but no one was willing to make any changes in their lives. They seemed to be stuck in their subconscious fear of change and the unknown, and in their habitual safety. Not knowing how else to help himself and others, the younger brother decided to change his faith and seek a better life elsewhere. He found out that it was impossible to leave the country other than by a plane. Luckily for him, his brother owned one. The small plane didn't need a long runway, but just as it was about to take off, he suddenly felt that something was weighing it down. He looked back and saw that it was his older brother trying to stop him from leaving by holding on to the plane's tail. Let go of me, shouted the younger brother, but the older one didn't want to do that. He was convinced that his younger brother was making a huge mistake by trying to leave the comfort they had gotten used to, their habitual safety. The brothers struggled and wrestled with the plane for a while before the younger one stopped the engine. He got off the plane and started to walk away. Where do you think you're going? He heard his older brother shout after him. You have nothing. How are you going to survive? He only shrugged his shoulders and continued on his way. He wasn't sure where he was going, yet he knew in his heart that he was doing the right thing. Soon he reached a large and dense forest beside a small river. Without hesitation, he entered the woods. He couldn't see anything through the dense greenery at first, but then, to his surprise, he found a path. He followed it for a long time without being able to tell what was in front of him. Finally, the path led him to a steep hill. It seemed impossible to climb it. The younger brother looked up at the magnificent hill and sighed. Ah, if I give up now, at the first big obstacle on my way, I won't get anywhere. No, I'm not going to be a quitter. Although really exhausted, he climbed the hill. There was a bridge on its top, leading to another hill and spreading across the river. The younger brother walked on the bridge and looked down at everything that he left behind. As he was contemplating his past, he felt joy rising inside. I am free, he whispered. So, this is how it feels. He reached into his pocket and found in it just a few coins. He counted them. Nine pennies, he said with a smile. That's all I have. At this moment, two strangers appear on the bridge. They overheard his statement. Nine pennies, repeated one of them, commenting to the other. That's actually plenty to change everything. The younger brother quickly turned his head and looked at the strangers. He greeted them politely and asked them how much money he needed to find a place to stay for the night. We don't use money in our land said the other stranger with a smile. We changed things here a long time ago. 
but we still use pennies as tokens when we play our favorite game called Penny for Your Thoughts, added the first stranger. You know, nine pennies can change everything if you buy with them the right thoughts. The younger brother nodded his head. With this small gesture, he paid respect to the wise strangers and acknowledged his own achievements. The strangers welcomed him in the land and generously invited him to stay at their home until he found his own place. And that's how the younger brother found a better life in the country where everyone had everything they wanted just because they knew the power of thoughts. He too created the life he wanted. He not only lived happily ever after, but also was able to help those who were ready to learn their own worth and power. They too were able to create the reality they wanted for themselves. And this is how we play the game. The nine pennies in our story symbolize the nine steps needed to be taken to change things. You can try this simple game, applying it to a particular situation or obstacle in your life. Having fun is the only rule. The more fun you'll have with the process, the more effective you will be. Description. In this game, you are the only player and winner. You are playing against yourself. You cannot lose at this game. No matter what the outcome, you benefit and win, either by achieving your goal or by getting the necessary experience needed for the next round. Remember to have fun. The less you worry about the outcome, the more effective you are. How to prepare. You need to choose a nice and safe place in your home or at work or at school where you can put either a nice box or container in which you will be collecting your nine pennies. We will call your nice box the Better Life account, BLA for short, and we will call the coins you collect in it Investment Pennies, IPs. Your IPs will add up at the end of each round and give you the power to get anything you want, a better job, happy relationship, or fulfillment of your dream. Note, the IPs can get you only one thing at a time. If you have more things that you'd like to achieve, you will need to start a separate round for each goal. In each step, you will put one investment penny in your Better Life account, and it will buy you the right thoughts needed for completion of each step. There are nine steps in the game and you will receive all of them during our subsequent shows. One step per week. Step one. Once you will find a good place for your nice box or container, which will become your Better Life account, for short BLA, put in that container one investment penny. That is, put one IP in your BLA. You have now acquired thoughts allowing you to get out of the box to complete step one, you need to be able to define clearly what limits you. Is it your environment, the way you were brought up, the way others influence what you think or do? You need to question your own motives, as well as clearly understand why and how others contribute to your situation through their opinions or actions. Reference. In our story, the younger brother found his limitations despite the illusory comfort he had in his life. He recognized the stagnation and lack of freedom. Your time limit for step one is one week till our next show. However, if you take longer than one week, it means that you are not ready to play this game. In such a case, take a break, do what's more important for you at this time, and you can return to the game when you are ready. Step out of the box. Have fun with it. Don't worry if you don't remember the story in the game or how to do the first step. We have posted the game Nine Pennies Can Change Your Life on my blog, on my official website www.johannakern.com 
and we will be adding the next steps there after each show. I would like you now to do a short relaxation with me, in which you will be guided to repeat some affirmations that can help you to reprogram your subconscious and deal with your subconscious fears. The affirmations come from my book 365 plus 1, Affirmations to Create a Great Life. The book contains a step-by-step -step program, which I designed based on many years of experience in counseling people to help them achieve what they wanted the most. If you are ready, I'd like you to listen to the following. Find a comfortable position, sitting or lying down. Close your eyes and let your arms rest alongside your body. Good. Now take a deep breath and slowly let it out. Take another deep breath and again slowly let it out. Then, while taking in the next breath, let it fill you up from toes to head and add an image to it, a pleasant dim light glowing everywhere inside you. Keep breathing and observing the light inside from the count of 10 to 1. 10 9 8 7 6 Five, four, three, two, one. Relax and let the dim light inside shine in every single cell in your body. Good. In order to reprogram your subconscious for the life you want, you need to learn how to replace your negative thinking with positive thoughts. Your life is not your enemy. Your life is your loyal friend. Acknowledge it. Appreciate it. You are worth living the most wonderful life. Repeat after me in your mind. I let go of my worries. I know life will support me. If I fully embrace my own worth. I am a unique human being. One in billions with my own story to tell in this life. I let my story unfold without fear of the future. I trust my own process. I trust that all is happening for my best. Good. Well done. Remember, the life you want on the subconscious level is already yours. And now you will learn how to access it so that you can start living it in your day-to-day -day reality. You have learned a lot from your past and now you can be free from it any hardship you have experienced has only made you stronger, wiser 
and more compassionate. Repeat in your mind, I will treasure what I have learned through suffering and struggling as a good lesson about who I am. I know that I am powerful. I know that I can trust and respect myself. I completely release my past and live in the now. Well done. You can move forward now in your life. The life you want can be yours. Make it your reality. Enjoy it and love it. You are a powerful creator and you will get what you want and live the life you want. Now you can open your eyes at the count of one to five. One, two, three, four, five. Open your eyes. Excellent. You've done very well. You are fully relaxed, yet energized and happy to continue with your day. Mm, that was very relaxing. Thank you for participating. I wish you the most wonderful time today, tomorrow, and for the entire week. Until we meet again at the same time. In the next show, we will talk in more details about the fear of change and the unknown and how to deal with it. I will be also responding on air to your questions, of course, without revealing your name. Please send them to this email address radio at johannakern.com Have a wonderful time. See you next week. Have a good one. See you next week. The life you want is yours. With Johanna Kern.